So the only thing we have yet to do, how do I find an angle now? Okay, how do I find an angle using sine, cosine, tangent? All right. I'm going to tell you nothing's going to change until we solve the equation. I still want you to set up the equation the same way we've been going about finding a side. The only difference is going to be when you solve that equation you set up. So in this first example here, trying to find x, identify what the 12 and the 24 are. I am not going to change that. Here you go, 28, what are, what's the 12? That's adjacent to the angle I'm trying to find. What's the 24? The hypotenuse. So out of those, adjacent hypotenuse, which ratio should I use? 28 again. Cosine. So everyone ready? Let's set it up. Cosine. What's my angle now? Okay, x equals adjacent 12 over 24. You set that same... This is how we've been setting them up. Now here's where the change is going to come. I am no longer going to put it over 1 and cross multiply. Here's why. I'll get 24 cosine x equals 12. You, I don't know. How are you going to solve for x? You can divide by 24, but it's where we started. You're not dividing by cosine. So does everyone see why cross multiplying is not going to cut it here when we find an angle? All right, so instead, what we're going to do, if you take a look at your calculators right now, right above the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons, everyone see to the negative one for each. Those are called the inverses, the inverses of sine, cosine, and tangent, and that's what we're going to use here to find the angles. So to find x, we're going to do the inverse of cosine with 12 over 24. That's how I find an angle using sine, cosine, and tangent as I use the inverse of it. So we go to our calculator. Now I can't hit the cosine button right away. I need to hit second cosine. So if you hit second cosine, there's your inverse. And you type in the ratio that you made, 12 over 24. You can put it in a fraction template too if you want. And then enter, and it will give you the angle that has a cosine of 12 over 24. So 60 degrees here. Mm -hmm. All right, we're good there. One doesn't make you great, as we know. Let's try out a couple more. Okay, number two, finding x, same thing, identify, set up your equation just like you've been going. Here we go, 21, what's the 12? Opposite, and what's the 18? All right, here we go, everyone. So it looks like I'm going to use which ratio for this one? 12? Sine. Sine of x equals 12 over 18. And even if you forget and you end up cross multiplying, you're going to be like, what's going on? I have no idea what to go from here. And that should signal, oh, that's right. I was finding an angle, so I need to use not sine, but the inverse of sine. Anytime you have to find an angle using sine, cosine, and tangent, I use the inverse. So go to your calculator, second sign, 12 over 18. And then what was the nearest degree I asked for at the beginning? 42 degrees. So that shouldn't be too bad, right? All set there. Okay, a couple more for you. Let's roll through these. 13, give me the sides you got. What's the 9? 13. Opposite, and what's the 3? Adjacent. So we should use what ratio? 13 again. 
tangent. Tangent of x equals opposite over adjacent. You are finding an angle, inverse tangent. And nearest degree, what are we looking at? 72? Nearest tenth, sorry. Uh, 71.6 degrees. Anybody paying attention on number four? Try to throw a little curve at ball at you. What am I looking for now? Side, so am I going to use any inverse? No, I'm just going to solve this like I did the first three review problems. Let's do it. One, here you go. The 11. And how about the X? What do I use with A and H? Hey, seven, A and H. Cosine, so the cosine of 38 is equal to adjacent 11 over hypotenuse x. I'll give you guys a second. Now I can do what? I can cross multiply, just like the old days here. You're going to end up dividing both sides by cosine of 38. And when you're ready, nearest tenth, number three, nearest tenth. Three, nearest tenth. Yep. Questions there from you guys. And again, being honors, we're just not going to deal with just triangles, right? We got to apply it to different types of figures, so let's do that. Let's go to the old rectangle. H I J K. Clockwise, counterclockwise, never diagonally. Ooh, K I. Look at what I gave you there. A little diagonal. Uh, 32. KJ, 11, find IKJ to the nearest degree. How do I know this is a right triangle? Because I can't use sine, cosine, tangent unless it is. Property of a rectangle, all angles are right angles. Uh, 25, here we go. What's that 11? Adjacent, what about the 32? Thank you, nice job. And what do I use with those two? Uh, one. Cosine of x equals 11 over 32. I don't know how many people started cross multiplying because it's just in your blood, but you're gonna get stuck and have nowhere to go. So I need to do inverse cosine of 11 over 32. And what are we going here? Nearest degree? Two, nearest degree. What are we rolling with? 70 degrees. Questions from you guys? God darn it, damn it.
Am I missing anything here? Am I missing anything? Okay, let's do this. Curl. Curls. Star. Shatter. Wow. Cubes. Flip. Drop. It just literally just falls. Genie. Pinwheels. We're going to re-vote then. You don't get all of them. You don't get all of them if there's two. Genie. Oh, pinwheels. Let's do this again. Pinwheels. If you want pinwheels, stop with the peer pressure. Curtains. Fades. Slide right. Seven. Slide left. Four, five, six. Okay, slide to the right. It's literally to the right. Okay, just making sure we're clear on that. All right, here we go. Slide right, everybody. Or Promethean Man. Let's do it. Ooh, the old flip. The old flip. There's the fade. Okay, here we go. Guys are losing your touch, huh? Losing your touch. Okay. All right, next up. It's just a change in directions now. Solve the right triangle. Happy news for me, bad news for you. Solve the right triangle. Find all missing sides and angles. That's what we're asking for to solve any triangle. Find all missing sides and angles. And really, it's not that bad. All right? It's not that bad. Let's, as a class here, decide. Do we, want, we have two sides right now. Do you want to find the third side, or do you want to go to an angle? Okay, which angle, A or B? Okay, angle B. Here we go. So going from angle B, the 21 would be adjacent to angle B and the 25? Hypotenuse. So which ratio right now would I use to find angle B? Cosine. So the cosine, I'll put B, angle B. Cosine of B is equal to adjacent 21 over hypotenuse 25. Inverse of cosine. So angle B will be equal to the inverse of cosine of 21 over 25. What angle has a cosine of 21 over 25? And what do we, angles are to the nearest degree. Angle B. Thirty three. We're good there. Okay, angle A. I would not expect you to use sine, cosine, or tangent at all. You could, but without using that, how can I find angle A? Subtract the two angles from 180 already. So 180 minus the 90 I was given minus the 33 I just found. Angle A will be 57 degrees. All right, we're almost there. Last thing I need to find, and this is really up to you now. How do I find CA now? 
We have a lot of options, don't we? We can go from one of the angles we just found and do sine, cosine, tangent, or we could do what if we didn't want to use any of the three? Pythagorean theorem. Do we have a preference here? Okay, Pythagorean theorem, then set it up here for me. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Where should the 21 and the 25 go? Uh, let's hear from 16. Where should the 21 and the 25 go? Yep, that's the hypotenuse, so 25 squared. And then 21 can either go in for A or B. So 21 squared plus B squared. I'll let you guys solve that and round to the nearest tenth. Uh, 24 when you're ready, nearest tenth. Thirteen point six. Everyone okay? Thirteen point six. Solve now. If we see that tonight, which you probably will, find all the missing sides and angles. And it's not the only time you're you're going to see it this unit. And then, yeah, we got to try out a good old word problem. Let's see if we're getting any better in setting these up. All right, the old student could see the water tower from a point on the soccer field at San Lobos High School. That's probably the most important part of the name of the high school. So we got a water tower. The old. There. Yep, some of you will pick that up probably tomorrow, but it's okay. And what is it here? The edge of the soccer field is 110 feet from the water tower. All right, so at least I can put. There's the edge, 110 feet here, the edge of the field. And the water tower is 32 and a half feet high. Got it so far, all good. What's the angle of elevation if the eye level, eye level of the student viewing the tower from the edge of the soccer field is six feet? So we got some student here. Six feet. But remember, from his eye level now, so I can't put the angle of elevation down here. It's from his eye level. Remember, horizontal distance, right? Line of sight to the water tower, that is what we're looking for, the angle of elevation from his eyesight. Didn't say from his feet or from the ground. It said from his eye level, the angle of elevation. All right, here. Got any sides of that right triangle in there I can use? Here's my right triangle I can use. Any sides? Because 32 and a half isn't one of the sides. 110 right here, yep. What about this portion here? That'll be what? 32 and a half. Minus six. And what ratio do I end up using here? What are those two sides? Opposite and adjacent, so I should use tangent, yep. So we're going to do opposite, whatever 32 and a half minus 6 was over 110. Nearest tenth of a degree. 
five whenever you're ready, nearest tenth of a degree. Thirteen and a half degrees, yep, his viewing angle. And of course, we got to graph every once in a while, right? We can always graph, yep. That was drop, yep, there you go. That was drop. And I know what some of you are probably thinking, but it's not going to happen in this problem, so don't worry. You usually think when I graph, I got to do distance formula, but graph the triangle and you'll see why it's not needed. Find the measure of each angle. Well, I think which angle can we just take care of right away right now? Where B, angle B? That's 90 degrees. Okay, now I need help finding A and C, but you're going to need to know the side lengths. I don't need distance formula. That's a horizontal and a vertical line. You can just simply count. So the length of AB would be four units. Yep. Length of BC, also, not also, but five units. You do not need to find AC. If you want to do Pythag and find it or distance and find it, go ahead. But I only need two sides to find angles, all right? Angle A, here we go. Angle A up first. Uh, number 20, angle A, what's the five and the four? Not here. Eight. According from angle A we're going from now, what's the five? And the four? So, yep, I got to use tangent here. Tangent of A. Be careful now. Opposite, what did you say, Colin, was the opposite side? Five over the adjacent side, four. Inverse tangent, because I'm finding an angle. That was today's topic. And we're going nearest tenth of a degree. Uh, Two, not here. Twenty-one. What is it? Fifty. Three degrees. And then angle B. Do I need to do tangent again? I'm not angle B. I'm sorry. Everyone's looking at me strange. That's why. C. Do I need to do sine, cosine, tangent? Try it out again. Nope. I already know the two angles out of the three, so I can just simply go 180 minus 90 minus that 51.3. Make our lives easy. Angle C. Thirty-eight point. Seven degrees. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. As long as it was graphed, yeah. And it clearly shows that that's a right angle, yep. Anything else there? Finding an angle, we're all good. Please, please pay attention to the rounding directions tonight, okay? Because when you go to your textbook, they do not give you what to round to, but I did on your packet and on the assignment sheet. All right, so please pay careful attention to those. All right. Uh, I think four of you, let's